Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a 2016 Audi A3. And what our problem is, is the clutch pedal is traveling to the floor. It's quite a simple and an easy, maybe, diagnosis and our repair, but I'm just gonna record it just in case it helps anyone out on the little pointers on this thing. What has happened? When I came to the car, originally, the car wouldn't start. And when it wouldn't start, I went in, I pressed the clutch, and she still didn't start. Normally, as we'd all probably know on these things, when you will flip around, when you turn the key, it doesn't start unless you clutch, press the clutch pedal. So there was a clutch position switch somewhere. Even though the pedal was gone to the floor, it still wasn't actually engaged in the clutch or the start system, sorry. It wasn't engaged in the starter. So what then I went in and had a look, just stuck my head in and up, and lo and behold, there was a push rod after pushing out or popping out of the clutch master cylinder. Um, I went messing and fooling, and by the looks of it, what's happening is there is no position sensor up on the top of the pedal. It's actually integrated in the actual master cylinder itself. You know, I have the new parts out here and I'll show you. But when fooling with it, lo and behold, I actually got the car to start, not from doing anything, just pressing the clutch and stuff. And when I got, to, got it to start, what I noticed was I had very, very small, so if the clutch pedal traveled so far, only the very base of it, I had a little bit of hydraulic pressure, we're gonna call it, okay? So I was able to then get the car started, whip you do. Then I couldn't really get a gear, so I put it into reverse, turned the key, and she kind of jumped and off we went and we got the car back over here. When I went in, I went looking. First thing I done was, I went to try and see, I knew there was some kind of an issue in here, but did I have more issues other than that? Why was I losing hydraulic pressure? So I went around and I actually, well, the number one I done was I brought the car up in the air and I had a look underneath the gearbox to see had I any leakage from a slave cylinder, but I didn't, it's dry in there. So we didn't have a problem in here. Then I went along and I pulled off my clutch or brake fluid cover and my fluid level was low, low to the point that the one reservoir for the lads that are DIYers, this might be of benefit for a lad in the trade, he won't, he'll know this all of a sudden. It was about half empty, but the half empty is where it would drop down because the pipe that's going out to the clutch mass and there's about halfway down the reservoir, it'll only ever run out kind of for the clutch at about the halfway point because it needs to leave some fluid in the actual braking system so you don't lose brakes. But I was about half empty. So fluid was getting out somewhere. And as I said, it wasn't happening from down here. So I bled the thing. Filled that up again. I bled this just to move it because it was awkward when it was floating around here. Um, pushing it and all that. And once I had a clutch pedal back, I was in and I was looking. And inside in the car, inside in the car then, I noticed that just, maybe you can kind of see it, can't really on camera. Down around there was kind of wet. And you can actually see kind of drop, drop marks or a wet mark right at the head of my finger. Even in there, you can see kind of a damp, damp mark. So whatever was happening here was causing a problem, losing brake fluid, and then the system ran out of fluid and became airlocked, and that's why we had in the pedal. Anyway, my diagnosis anyway is that it needs a clutch master cylinder. All very simple and easy. But I'm only just doing a little video just to give lads a couple of pointers. Clutch master cylinder. And whichever one of them is our parent number, I don't know. Say it's actually that one there, the number. That is the clutch master cylinder. Open up sesame. What I like to do sometimes is I like to be able to look at my actual part. They gave me this thing as well. Part number is there. And I maybe mean, it's not. Yeah, it's actually there, five Q. It's an actual bushing that sits into this piece that sits on the pedal. Now, I'm only going to do a fast run-through of how to change this thing. When I look down here, fairly easy. There is a little plastic heat shield that I'm going to have to pull off it, so it's only one or two clips, that's easy. But what I'm doing is I'm just doing a little look. There's a hydraulic pipe that comes out up onto the brake reservoir, and then we have steel pipe coming out for the high-pressure side coming from the master cylinder to the gearbox. The clip in there that has to be popped off, we have to pop off this rubber hose off of the reservoir, but because it's half empty, half full, half empty, because it's half full, what I'm doing is I'm going to pull off the hose and block it. 
I said some of you might like to see these yokes. Pure tech, they're all over the place. And that's a nice little box of plugs. You know, all they do, all are all I'm gonna do, missing one of them actually, yeah. Is they're gonna pop off that rubber hose in there. But this just might be handy for someone. You know, you, you stick them in and twist them into place and just block the hole so no fluid will come out or leak out while we're working on the thing. That's that piece in there. Uh, other than that, what I like to do is I like to examine my piece to see what way it's held in or any of that kind of crack. What I'm looking at, I would suggest from here, there's going to be two bolts or some kind of pivot points or pins or whatever it may be. I would think one on the bottom, one on the top. Out here then, actually I'm looking at the rubber hose we don't have, so we're going to be pulling it off from the actual master cylinder side and blocking the hose with our little grommet down here. The other thing I can see while I'm looking at it is the clip pops down the way, so a little small screwdriver. We're going to pop in at the lower side of this, pop down the clip on the old unit to get the pipe out of it. And I'm going to do that after I disconnect the plastic pipe because I don't want any fluid flowing through the master cylinder itself and dropping out in the ground. I want to keep this as fast and clean as easy as possible. When I'm looking, it's fed from the inside, so inside in the car, it's fed up and out through the bulkhead, okay? So there's very little work going to go on out here other than pop off a rubber hose, pop off that little steel clip, pop off the steel pipe in here. Everything else is going to be underneath the car, or sorry, in underneath the steering wheel, and yeah, it's going to be fairly straightforward, I think, or at least I'm hoping. Down and in here, I'm going to pop off these start bits of plastic, throw them to one side. I've taken out air boxes and stuff to bleed the system. There's two size eights down here. I can see a size 20 torques here, probably one or two more, but I'm going to get that piece out of our way so we can get in and see what the heck is happening in at that master cylinder, okay? I'll do that and I'll touch base, Just pop it off, all comes off easy. Little switch for our lights in here. DL16, I use the, the 20 torques to pop out that thing. Just these one, two, three little legs pop out of place. Now when I come in here, airbag sitting in there. This may not, people might be nearly afraid of this thing. I'm not gonna be afraid of it at all. One, two, three bolts holding it in, block connector over there. What I'm probably gonna do is make sure I have the key out so there is nothing gonna happen with airbags. Leave it go asleep for a couple of minutes and disconnect it while I have um, it on bolt or when I have it on bolt. Okay guys, little pin there, just put a screwdriver underneath that little pin. I'm giving you kind of a, I don't recall it. Uh, can I do it one hand? It should just pop out. And there we go. Airbag. Out and off. Just don't turn on the key, okay? Because you'll need a scan tool to clear faults afterwards. See what we're up against in here. I might get out that little bit of plastic out of the way. And then we're into the pedal and we'll just see what's happening in here. Oh, it seems relatively easy, doesn't it? I think it does, anyway. Okay. That little box was bolted up there there was two little plastic legs not bolted up it was just clipped on just in there and he just popped it down off and I pulled it out by the side of the pedal here quite easy and fast there's a little bolt 13 bolt in see can I see this yeah that's actually it up there in front of my finger and that I'm pulling out to get rid of that bear and that bear and I'm going to pull out that box and possibly off the two pipes outside and hopefully that whole thing will land out my hand in it Let's see our four minutes. Okay, that bolt up there next, and then these one. I can't see, there's, yeah, there's two up the top that I can't rightly show you. One and two, okay. And get that box out of them pedal bags. I've taken out the bottom bolt and one of the tops. Well, I've taken out that piece of stuff also on the bolt. And that all comes out quite easy. Just a little wiggle and a twist and out it comes. Now I'm using what you might want to know is what I'm using is looking at a six inch extension with a universal head on it and then a 13 socket from a little battery ratchet. I'm gonna leave one bolt in it and I'm gonna get out that little clip that we were talking about out the outside, pop it down and block. So I'm gonna get in with a little pocket screwdriver, pop off the clip, pop off the hose, block it with our little grommet. I'm gonna go again from okay. there. Okay. Hose just pulls off. Little grommet on the top of it. Or that we put in the top of it. Clip popped out, fell on the ground on me. But the high pressure pipe is out. Time to get inside and do that last bolt. Okay guys, the top bolt is probably the more, most awkward one. Wherever I can show it to you. I can't really even see it. The extension 
is heading in in there but it's just going straight in i have two long um extension bars and a 13 socket on but i can get in it from there okay that's what i'm pulling out at this point okay right that is her there's my extension bar sorry for the lighting the two nuts uh, i didn't get it out fully the top one okay top one is still stuck in there i've got to go do the same again i'll take it off and then we'll we'll pull but it's the top bolt is not out they're coming out fully maybe sure look stay on camera get it up in. this might be as i'd call it there long winded again but see if i can get in and see where i'm i'm going okay she definitely has to be up there now. see what i box with no no pedal box out yet the nut seems to be on. It's up there still, but it's just not popping. I'm caught or snagged on something. Okay, time to get off camera and see what I'm caught on. Okay, I was just kind of caught on plastic grommets. The um, position sensor that I'm suggesting is what was causing the no start thing is actually sitting down there. I need a little pocket screw again that's outside the front, but there's the four wires that are on the position sensor. Look, and this will all be in hand down in a second. Relatively handy, I have to say. Now, I don't, I don't think that was too awkward, but I, I just can't get in that little pin with my finger. No, I'm going to need a screwdriver and get this thing out of my hand. Okay, guys. Pedal box out in hand. There's our two top bolts. They're only kind of stuck on Those, that clip. I don't want to stuck in on the bolt. I'll put it on in a moment. It just pushes in. Um, there's two little plastic pins here holding the mess in there in place. They just squeeze in. So I was going to use a little nipex just to squeeze in and push in on both of them. Exact same type pin there as well. Squeeze and push out. So swap it out. Put it on anyone. Back together. Okay, mess is in there. Popped out of it. Actually, no wire is connected to the pedal, so you can see that it's integrated in, into this thing. Um, hence, our no crank situation. When it came, that little plastic grommet that I had in that piece is actually popped in there, but it's quite tight. I wasn't able to push it in with my hands right and I had to put it into the vice. It only goes in from one side. So, watch that. It, it's larger on that side than it is on that side. So, it has to push in from this side, but I had to put it in vice and pop it into place, okay? Um, that is that. I'm going to sit that back in, pull out this little push rod and put the actual pin back in, the plastic pins back into place. There's one that goes through the pedal and there's the two for holding the mess in there. Okay, I'm going to slap it into that. Okay, guys, back to the other. Our little pins pushed into place. Same up here. Wouldn't say tight, but they're not just falling in and out. They have to be pushed kind of slightly hard and tough. Time for this thing to sit into place and once we have it in place I pull off these rubber grommets um, out underneath the bonnet when I'm underneath the bonnet. I'm going to probably at this point tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the pedal is up as in the fully up position and when I'm going back together I'm going to put on the feed pipe first with the pedal in the up position and the feed pipe going on it's going to gravity feed through here. I'm going to suggest that when I pop it back on I'm not going to need to bleed anything suggestion on my my plan of attack um, right time to get this sat back into place so oh, i must put in this little clip or pin in here before i go together but you don't want to see that it's a little bit tight to get in on the top one hence the same as it coming out what is what's in there is there's a wiring loom that's a little bit kind of out in front of the top bolt and what i done is i sat it in on that bolt and i caught the pedal and kind of like levered in against the loom and then she popped into place okay so the pedal it box itself is back in place i put in that little steel shim and i'm sending a couple of nuts now and i might tighten them up before i go underneath the bonnet okay so the three bolts three nuts sorry one up here one up here one down there are going to be squares up at this point okay, okay guys top bolts are a little bit awkward to get in at i'm just going to give you what i do i can't get my hands up on a nut it was attempting to fall out of the socket so it's very basic Everyone will probably know of it, but anyway, bit of paper in underneath the socket or in the socket. 
You know, like just put it flat across and push in the bolt. And it just keeps the bolt in it. Again, it's not, I don't have any fancy sockets worth two or three hundred euros with magnets and all that crack inside it. It's just a socket with a bit of paper. <clears throat> Best adv advice I can give you on the top ones, anyway, to get them in. At least a nut won't fall out of it, okay? Okay, guys, I'm back. Out here. First thing I'm going to do, pull off the top grommet. I'm going to pull out around with my little Puretech blocky G thing. Still in. Sit you. Well, if I can get it out with one hand, there's a problem. Right, come on, bit. Okay, we're falling out now, I think. Feels like it's slightly. Not doing great, but you know, they are great little, these Puretech little things are great little yokes for, for that up there so we don't lose it. We went across there. You saw that little spill of fluid that happened. We will have to Okay, we will have to top up that, so I'm going to take that off to remind myself. Okay, now what I'm hoping is, clutch pedal is up. I'm going to take out that grommet. This thing is going to be, is going to kind of gravity feed itself. So the fluid that's flowing down here is going to try and flow in through here and out. I'm just going to leave it for a minute or two. If there's a drop or two drops down on the ground, it's not rightly going to bother me too much. There is a little seal on the very top of that. It's not very clear there now because my hand is in situ, but it's right there in the middle of the camera. Right there. Um, make sure that doesn't get damaged on you. And we should, I'm hoping, very momentarily get a sort of breakthrough coming through that. Maybe take a might take a second or two, or am I even? Yeah, I am. I have enough fluid in there. That interior, after a couple of seconds, we should see. I'll leave that up there, somewhere out of the way. No, that should look level down there again. And I should see drip, 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 okay? Once I see drip, 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 I'm going to feed in this, and I'm hoping that I will be able to get away without even bleeding this thing. So I've done it already, and it's going to be very easy because of airbox and all that crack out, but that's what I'm going to try. Okay, we're going to get inside. I'll leave it up. She just came. You can actually see it. You see it there? It has just... And then she stopped again. You can actually see it now. Drip, drip, drip. See there? Now I'm going to pop in my pipe. Okay, I didn't even put out this other clip that's in there. I'm pop in the pipe. In theory, that fluid should kind of flood the little pocket that's in here. That's the way my thinking goes on. And then I'm hoping that if I give it... I was going to give it a push. Yeah, there she goes. There's a little push. And once I give it a little push, clip has popped into place. The seal inside is sealing. We'll clean off the little bit of residue that's in there. But I'm hoping that... In theory, at this point, I have my clutch pedal. Let me just see. Nah, I didn't have it in full. Okay, so my magic... My magic it didn't work on this occasion. I have to uh, I have to go and bleed anyway. Okay. So look, neither. God loves a tryer, doesn't he? There's a little thing on the bottom, but nothing. Not enough. We'll open the bleeder outside in a second. Okay, leave the pedal up and just see we're going. I'm going to get it back on my, actually, the block connector that's sitting in here is relatively easy to push into place. And at this point in time, it's just reverse psychology i'm going to put in that iron bear that we took out pop back in this module and then at that point we'll put back on our air bike okay trying to get going and feeding in this yoke it just it just swings up and in around okay in there is where that module came out so i'm going to get that back in, okay. back in place this little bear is back into place our little module is sitting back up there I have the pedal up, so the pedal is up in its resting position. And I did say a second ago that we had to bleed, so what I'm doing. Again, it's me being time conscious or aware of a cat can, if you can see it underneath. And I just have the bleeder. I have a twist, it, it twists very easy, the bleeder. Bleed screw, I don't know, can't show it really there. But it twists and right now it, it's open you can see the fluid actually flowing out okay 
it's flowing out. It's running down by the gearbox. I'll put it under three on it in a minute anyway, so I'll be cleaning it with a bit of brake clean. But for now, it's it's gravity feeding from here to the mass cylinder, to the pipe, down hill, down as far as the gearbox. So it's only doing what a stream in theory would do. It's just flowing from a high point to the low point. And hopefully by the time I have my airbags and all that crack on, in there, I will be, I'll be pedal back. If I was here, we'd see a pocket or two of air coming bloop, 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 intermittently. My other shortcut didn't work, so. <clears throat> yeah, we have to change our, our plan of attacks, isn't it? It's going to be a little wearing doom now. Somewhere. For my airbag. Yeah, so I'm going to have to just check in and verify the. position it goes on in for myself. All right. Try to do this. I tried to show some of my stuff. I'm a genie Mac while live on camera, but again, everyone says to me, get a head cam. I bought one one time, but I don't know. Okay. In that goes. No cycle of the key has happened. And purely because of that, we're not going to see any airbag faults, okay? Bolts. One. The other one is, is deep in. One and two. I'm going to get the other one in with a socket off the camera. But that's it. Our airbag is back in place without any, any issues or concerns. Okay. Bit of plastic at the bottom. Stuck back on. The DL16 sitting there. Pushed back into place. Block connector gone onto the light switch. And that little bit of plastic. Popped on, two size eight bolts, little 20 mil torques, or 20, size 20 torques. Um, okay, so in here we're, we're back reassembled. Our thing is tiddling away there in a moment or two. We'll go. It's red or a little bit stiff to do with the players maybe or something. We'll go back in and just see. Okay, touch back. Good. There's our key. Everything back together. That, all that messages are to do with my airbox been taken off it. Well, our clutch problem is done and fixed. I'll stick on the airbox. I'll clear faults and I'll give you put on my under tray just running back in the car and give you my kind of a final thought as the man okay says. guys um, that's the finishing of this thing I don't know it's only a straight walk through of fitting a master cylinder and a 15 or 16 Audi A3 fingers crossed some of you got something out of it and might find it a little bit useful to look over and see prior to doing the job other than that simple enough clutch pedal going to the floor a little bit of moisture sitting down at the bottom of the clutch pedal and yeah straightforward and easy enough guys please like and subscribe and i'll talk to you on the next cartoon peter kennedy signing out talk to you soon bye